Hey, Christy here from Lunacraft Fiber Arts. Today, I want to show you how to spin paper on a top well drop spindle. Now, before I get started, I want to let you know that this video may be a little longer than usual. Um, I'm just going to be showing you a few different types of paper and how to spin them. You do spin different types of paper differently. It just depends on how thick your strips are, that you cut them or you make them and what kind of paper it is and I'll explain that in just a minute but before we start spinning the actual paper I want to talk about your spindle your spindle needs to be a top whirl which means the whirl is at the top there are spindles that the whirl is at the bottom now I did try a bottom whirl and I tried spinning paper supported and they to me they just don't work as good as a top whirl so I highly suggest using a top whirl now this spindle I've had for four or five years. I bought it on Etsy Spinner store on Etsy. I don't remember what I gave for it now, I mean then, but now they run about nine dollars a piece. This spindle and all spindles of this nature have a shaft, a whirl, which helps the momentum of spinning. A finial at the top, some of them have a finial, some of them don't, some of them just have the shaft running up, and they have a hook. And it's really good when you're starting out to have a, if you can see that, um, a little notch here. And you'll, I'll explain that too as we go, why a notch is important when you're first starting out. Now, this spindle weighs over two ounces. I would highly suggest you get a spindle that weighs over two ounces. A standard size spindle usually a spindle of this size this amount of weight is good for plying spinning thicker yarn like a worsted and up worsted or a bulky weight yarn or a lot of times it's used to make art yarn I use mine to make art yarn and to ply with also a wood one I think is better the weights better with a wooden spindle now Etsy spinner on Etsy I have no affiliate connection to them whatsoever but I am going to leave the description link I mean the link in the description box below so if you want to go purchase this one it's just exactly like mine um, you can and I, this is a great weight I would not go up to a three ounce I would stay from two and up but stay away from a three ounce. A three ounce is going to be too heavy and your hands going to, and wrist is going to get tired after a while. Now I do have some listed and I don't know what the weights of them are right off my top of my head. I do have some listed on my Amazon store too. And my Amazon store, um, I do have affiliate links and I do get a small portion um given to me if you use my links and no extra cost to you you get your product and Amazon gives me a little bit for using my links and I'll leave those in the description box below too but there's no affiliation with Etsy and honestly I prefer the one to Etsy than the ones on Amazon because I know what the weight is and this is a good weight okay now, you don't want a midi spindle you don't want a mini spindle because they're not going to be the weight you need and this one has a three inch whirl, by the way. Okay, the papers we're going to try to spend today are just regular party streamer paper, like you buy uh, at the dollar store or Walmart or anywhere. A lot of times you can get them in like Dollar Tree or somewhere for a dollar or a little over a dollar. I know the prices have went up, so it'll be more than a dollar now. But you can get party streamer paper very easily and it's pretty cost efficient I don't know how many yards you can spin out of this it would depend on whether you spin it thick or thin and I'm going to show you how to spin it thick or thin that's your choice um, also this one that I have is not color light fast color fast I don't know if you can find it light fast color fast and that might be an issue for you if you want to make paper beads for weaving or loom knitting for something I don't think it would be an issue especially if you combine it with another fiber uh, but just to make paper beads it might be an issue and I did make some paper beads out of this 
that I'm going to share in another video soon. And I wasn't pleased with the paper beads I made from this yet. And when I say yet, I mean the glazes and glues that I used and some techniques I tried. I'm going to try some other different glazes and glues and techniques and see what I think. And you're welcome to try them yourself too after you learn how to do this if you want to try it. But um, I will come back and show you my findings and my opinions um, so you'll know what this might be best used for more than making paper beads. And it might work out making paper beads with a different glaze. I'm going to try a couple of different glazes and see. We're also going to be learning to spin tissue paper today. I'm going to be showing you how to do tissue paper and paper napkins. And there is a method to these that's different than spinning party streamers. Something else you're also going to need is a glue stick. Any old glue stick will work. It doesn't matter. Elmer's or this is an off-brand. A good pair of scissors that cuts paper well. And that's about it. That's about all you're going to need. So, I first I want to show you some what I have spun with the streamers. Now, I spun mine thin. And this is some... It didn't take long to spin that. It don't take long to spin a roll of party streamers. This is some purple and yellow that I also spun with party streamers. And you can see it has a rough roughness to it. That's gonna, It's not going to be a smooth yarn because it's paper. But you can get it smoother if you spin it thinner. Okay? Just remember that. This is a yarn I spun and I combined my napkin and my tissue paper with the liner of the napkin. And I'll explain that in a minute too. And this is the yarn that I got from it. And I combined it. You see I combined them together here. So I can make beads that maybe are tricolor. Or have three different parts to them. And that would depend on how long you make your strips. But that's some that I spun from the tissue paper and the napkins. So, let's get started. Let's try this newfound craft, if you've never tried this. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so here we're just going to try this purple one right now. Now what I do is, I measure mine out. Just, I mean, it's not going to be precise. Just in the roundabout ball figure way. Let me put my camera down just a little bit so you can see a little better. I measure mine out maybe about two or three feet. I don't really want more than that because I'm going to be cutting it. And I don't want my strips so long that they're getting them away. So I'm just going to tear some off. You don't have to tear it off. You, if you want it more even, you can cut it with your scissors. And I'm going to fold it in half, just like this. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. And then again one more time just like that so I've got three or four inches here and I don't want it real thick that's why I don't want to pull out some um, pull so much off too because I'm gonna be cutting it now let me get my glasses so I can see and we're gonna cut it if you want it thin like what I have spun like this You need to cut it in three different strips. Now you can cut it up in the middle and have two thicker strips. Your yarn will be, your uh, paper yarn will be thicker, or you can leave it just like this. And I will show you how to how to spin it just the width it is and make it thicker, bulkier. But if you want it thinner like mine, you need to kind of just eyeball it and cut it in three strips, just like this. And lay it down. And then another. And then you got your three strips. And that will make a thin yarn. Now remember, if you want it a little bit thicker, you can just cut it in two strips. Or if you want it really thick, and I've missed my little piece here, you can cut it, not cut it all if you want it real thick. Okay. So now, to get started... 
spinning paper and spinning um, protein and cellulose fibers such as wool and stuff like that is similar but it's different. You don't have a staple length other than what the length you've cut this. If you spin wool you'll know what staple length is. If you don't, I have a video showing you how to start out spinning uh, wool on a top whirl spindle and I'll leave that in the description box below too if you want to see the differences between spinning paper and spinning wool. And paper's easier. Okay, I'm just telling you it's easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our end just like this. And one reason I want to mention, one reason why I like spinning this type of paper, this crepe paper, is because it has some stretch to it. Now I did a little research. The reason it has a stretch to it is because they put a sizing on it. And that's what gives it that crinkly texture. So it's like some kind of plastic or, I don't know, it's some kind of sizing they use. They use sizing in cloth too for the selvage to keep it from fraying when they're weaving. Um, so it's, it's something that if you see it kind of has a little bit of stretch to it like that. So I'm going to show you how you can manipulate, manipulate that stretch to make your yarn even thinner if you want to when, once you start spinning. So take your paper and stick it up underneath your, kind of bunch it up underneath like that. Let me do that again. Kind of hook it right here and kind of bunch it up underneath and then pull it up to your other piece. And this is what we're going to call our fiber supply or a paper supply. Fiber supply is what you call it in um, wool. And then we're going to, and I'm going to move my camera up a little bit more. And I've got my hand down here on the end. And we're going to just twist. We're just going to start twisting. This is creating what they call a leader. And the leader is nothing more than to get started to wrap on your shaft so that you can pull it up and continue to spin more. So we're just twisting. I'm not turning loose of my spindle. I'm just twisting down here. So I'm not turning loose yet. I keep my thumb... You see how it's twisting? I keep my thumb, so when I twist, I just kind of move it up, and you don't need to have a death grip on it. You just need to hold it loosely. I mean, not enough for it to drop, but you need to hold it loosely and kind of guide your thumb up as you go. Okay? Now, we've got a leader. Now, you're saying, what are we going to do with that? How are we going to get this down here on the shaft? And if you want to twist it and make it a little bit thinner, you can kind of let it hang hold it a little bit tighter up here pinch it and then twist it like that and it'll make it thinner so the way we get it down here on the shaft is we can either butterfly it like this and the way I butterfly and you do this with wool too I pinch it between my thumb and my pointer finger I go to the back of my pointer finger and the back of my pinky and I come back around to the front like this and then I go over my middle finger and then back around my pinky, making a figure eight. Okay, so let's do that again. Around the back of my pointer right here, between my thumb, I hold it between my thumb and my pointer, around my pinky, around my point, the back side of my middle finger, back around the back of my pinky. And I just keep going back and forth like that, figure eight. And I take it off. Now normally you do that in wool so you won't lose your twist. And you're not going to lose your twist with paper as much as you would wool, but it's a good practice to have. Now, when you go to put it on your shaft, you can tape it right here. Take your little scotch tape and tape it so it'll stay there and it won't be coming off. If you're pretty dexterous and you're used to doing this anyway, you can take it and wrap it around and wrap it over it like that so it'll hold it. And then just keep wrapping it around. And wrap it onto your shaft. Now, let me make something clear. When you're spinning wool or paper, whichever direction you spin, whether it be clockwise or counterclockwise, you need to always spin in the same direction. You need to wind it on your shaft in the same direction in which you spin. I'm left-handed. I spin counterclockwise. If you're right-handed, most right-handers spin clockwise. Some teach themselves, left-handers teach themselves to spin clockwise, but I don't. It doesn't matter to me. I 
and whatever whatever direction you spin is you you ply in the opposite direction so since I sp spin counterclockwise toward me I have to ply clockwise okay and there's an S and Z twist that's involved in that but that's not important with paper we're not gonna worry about that right now okay so what you do is you leave enough of your leader don't wrap it all the way down to the like this you need enough of your leader to go across your notch this is where your notch comes in across your notch and then hook it so that holds it in place if you don't have a notch it wants to kind of bounce and slide around on the edge of your whirl and so then we start twisting again okay now we're twisting it as I go up you see I've got some rough places here that's okay it tried to tear a little bit there but that's okay we're not trying to make it perfect as paper okay and I just keep let me put my I keep turning my spindle and holding my paper up like this and kind of going across you see my thumbnails kind of going in that little divot there where I turn I'm turning it toward me because I'm turning counterclockwise if you're right-handed more likely you're gonna be going the other way and I'm turning now when you get comfortable with it and you get a little bit more on your um, shaft wound up and two this type of spindle will hold more um, on the shaft you can store more on your shaft than you could a, a smaller spindle too anyway so now we're at a point almost where we can add some on because we're running out of our paper so we just keep and you can that by this point after you've got you know some on here you can start just turn it and let it kind of I kind of let it kind of rest in my hand and spin it like that so I kind of have some control if I need to grab it real quick and then when I get up here I leave about a thumbnail's length I take my glue now you can do it without glue but it's a little trickier and sometimes it wants to break apart so I use glue I found that using a glue stick works really well holds it together and so what I do is I put just a little bit of glue stick right here you have to be careful because it'll break and if it does it says mine broke that's okay I just kind of stick it back on there just like that and then add your paper your next strip to where your glue is just like this and since I already know which way I'm turning when I'm spinning it I'll just kind of take it with my fingers and get it started a little bit and that'll kind of help that glue grab onto the other piece and I just kind of spin it myself and then I just go back to spinning and you'll do that when you add on strips okay and then I wind it back on make sure I leave enough of my leader to bring back up and spin again now if you're uncomfortable spinning vertical if you want to start out you can also spin horizontally you can spin horizontally same direction that you spin vertical but your wrist is going to get tired turning because you don't have that weight to help you take some of that stress off your wrist but you can do that that's up to you okay now what happens if your paper breaks while you're spinning in the middle of a strip and you drop your spindle well that's why they call it a drop spindle because it happens even with the best of uh, wool spinners too if it breaks let's just break it off let's just pretend it broke all you need to do is the same thing you do when you attach another piece take your glue and when you put your glue on here make sure you lay down lay your spindle down so that you're not putting that weight pushing 
against, pulling against it. That way your paper's not li as likely to break. You don't need to put a lot on here. You don't have to be rough with it. And just attach it. Like you did a little while ago. Lay it on top, your new piece on top of where the glue is. And then get it started by twisting it in the direction which you're spinning. And go past where you attached it so you know it's in there good. And then start spinning again. See? And then you can spin and finish your strip and then add another. Now, one thing that I've noticed with spinning, I'm moving my camera around a lot so you can see. I've noticed spinning this type of paper, this crepe paper, it has a little stretch to it. I think I mentioned that earlier. Now one thing you can do, you can either use your fingers and kind of smooth it out and make it a little bit thinner, or you can take it and hold it up against either when you take it off and hold it up against your shaft or when you have it up here as long as you keep a little bit of pressure on it and you can pull it just slightly a little bit just a little bit you don't want to pull it hard enough to break it but you'll feel it stretch a little bit and that'll kind of give you a little bit of a thinner smoother look if that's what you're looking for but paper's not going to be thin and smooth like a wool's going to be so I'm going to finish out this strip and then I'm going to show you how to start one that's not cut, that's a full piece. Okay. And then when you're done, you can, if you don't have it on here too tight, and I mine might, but no it's not. Then you can just slide it off the end. You can't do that with wool. <laughs> you can just slide off the end, you've got your little ball there. Okay. You don't even have to rewind it if you don't want to. Now, let's decide. Let's say we're going to do a thicker yarn with this type of paper. And I'm not going to do a big piece, but I'm going to show you. What I do is, let's cut it. I want it cut because I want it, I want to show you with a cut. Or you can tear it like that, either one. But it's best to show you cut so you'll know exactly if you decide to cut it what I'm doing. Okay, if you have a big piece like this, and you want your yarn to be thicker, take the corner, and I'd start kind of twisting in the direction that I'm going to be spinning, which is counterclockwise. I hook it underneath my hook. You might want to, you know, twist a little bit more than that. And I fold it up and sandwich it between, just like that, and then I start spinning. And you can see your yarn's thicker. And it works in the same way. Just like that. And you would leave about a thumbnail's length here and glue your other piece to it. So it's the same concept, it's just a thicker yarn. But it's better to start at the corner with a thicker piece. Okay, so that's crepe paper. Now let's look at tissue paper and paper napkins. Now when spinning the paper napkin, you need to remove the liner if it has one. And the liner is the white backing. Most of the time it's white. And you need to separate it. And sometimes it's hard to see, sometimes it's not. Sometimes there's two backings on them. You need to take them all off. And then you can decide if you want to spin the backing or you want to save it for something else later. I spun my backing in with mine after I separated it. I just made strips out of it and I spun it too. So there now you have two strips you can spin. And I cut my liner the same way I cut this. I folded it back the way it was supposed to be, and then I cut it in the size strips I wanted to spin. 
So if I want to spin it preferably thin, I cut about quarter to a half inch, depending on how thin I want it to be, or inch if you want it to be a thicker yarn. Now remember when you spin this, it doesn't have any stretch to it. So I won't cut all that up. And the same thing with the tissue paper. I took a piece, I folded it up, it's folded in half, then it's folded in four, in a fourth. Now again, and I've done the same thing. I cut it. Now this piece is going to be wider because I'm cutting it on the fold. So I might want to open it up and cut it again if I want it to be thinner. And you could do thick and thin. You could do thin pieces and thick pieces and spin them together like art yarn. You could kind of, you know, make it artsy. So, you see, that's not uniform cut. It doesn't matter. It's going to be all folded up together anyway. So, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take our, our um, paper, and you can start it. You can kind of pre-start it if you want to, like this, in the direction you're going to be spinning. I'm spinning... I'm twisting it toward myself because I spin counterclockwise. Right-handed, you would spin it back the other way, more, more than likely. That's what you're going to feel the most comfortable doing. I take it, pinch it together like this, and then just start twisting. Now, you don't want to really let it hang down and twist it until you get your leader um, spun and wind it on here because it might break a lot with you if you do. So I would kind of hold on and spin till I get my leader spun and put it on my shaft. And so then take your t glue, if I know what I did with mine, <laughs> and add your glue on here. And let's say you want to add, you don't want to spin another purple strip, so you want to add a paper napkin like this. Depending on what you want to show this way or that way, I'm going to put mine this way for now. And it's going to kind of hide some of the some of the um, design. If I put it open with the non-printed side up, it'll, it depends on which way you're spinning, though. And then I'm going to kind of get it twisted around. You can, as you get used to it, you can kind of learn to do it with your fingers after you attach it. You don't have to do it manually before you put it back on your spindle. And then I'm just going to spin like this until I get my leader a little bit longer. And then I'm going to take it off, put it on my shaft. Again, you can tape it if you're, if it, up oh, and there it broke. And if that happens, that's okay because, you know, that might be enough to make something that you want to make. Just leave it on there. Don't waste it. And then just start wrapping around it. Because I don't try to connect my ends. I just wrap them around what's already on the ball. And go from there. Because sometimes you're going to be cutting it anyway if you're making beads. Now I did try some beads with this. And they turned out very well after glazing them. They look good. Um, I combined it with some other paper. Which I'll show you what I did as some accents on some beads so paper napkins tissue paper um, the liner even spinning this it did very well so we will continue to try different papers and since you know how to spin paper now on a top whirl drop spindle um, I'm not going to show you every paper that I spin I mean, the act of spinning it, since, I mean, it's basically the same process with all paper. But I will show you the outcome of any paper beads I make, any suggestions I have, problems I run up with. Um, so you can take that advice and run with it and do what you want to with it and, you know, try your own creative process. And... I will be limiting some of it. I'll be doing some uh, demonstrations of needle knitting with it, different types, and crocheting with it, tell you which 
procedure I think works best with which paper uh, and even some weaving. I want to combine some weaving and, and knitting with some um, other fibers like wool, cotton, silk, that kind of thing with some paper. Uh, might even do that with some paper beads too. So just have fun with it. Get you a spindle. Don't spend a lot of money on it. And you can, I, you can even make one at home. Um, there's, if you don't want to spend money on one right now, you can make one at home out of stuff around the house. Uh, and then you can weigh it and try to get the weight and even it out. The thing about making one of your own is getting your weight right. And I really do highly stress it needs to be over two ounces, but not up to three. Um, three is going to be just too heavy, but a good two, two and a half, 2.6, 2.8 is going to be a good weight of uh, top whirl drop spindle to have. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you give it a try. And let's go on a paper spinning journey and let's see what we can do with paper. Um, I'm excited about this because I've been wanting to do this for a long time. And like I said, it'll be intertwined in between my limited videos that I do. And there's going to be some more paper bead videos for my paper beaders uh, soon. I'm going to be going back to my Pinterest page. I'll put that in the description link below too. Um, a lot of you know about my Pinterest page. There's a lot of paper beads I've made in the past on there. And I've already uploaded one video to one that I made to show how to make it. And I'm going to be revisiting some of those and show you how um, I made those beads um, using iridescence and uh, salt and alcohol resist techniques. Um, all kinds of stuff I've done. And I think uh, you'll like that because then you won't only have the picture, you'll have the video to go to and watch that goes with the picture. And when I put those pictures up on Pinterest, I wasn't doing YouTube then. So that's why they're sitting there with no videos. But now I have the ability to do that. So I'm going to go back and give those to y'all so y'all will have those to watch with the picture. Okay, have fun. Enjoy playing with your world and your paper and I will see you again very soon I will come back the next video will be um, the results that I got from making paper beads with the crinkle paper um, party streamers and I think you're gonna be if you you may experiment yourself for we'll get there but I think you're gonna be surprised at what happens when I did certain things with these I was blown away because I was not expecting it. And my husband liked it, but I'm not fond of it. But, <laughs> you know, to each their own. <laughs> so anyway, I will talk to you later and have a great day. Bye-bye.